Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the biblical principles of estate planning. Today, I'm gonna to share a very common question that I get a lot from females, which is, my husband does not wanna do his estate plan. I wanna do it, I wanna protect my kids. What do I do? Can I set up my own estate plan? How do I convince my, uh, my husband to do an estate plan with me? So those are all the questions that uh, I'll answer for you today with my experience as an estate planning attorney, with working with hundreds of clients, and with my walk with my wife and my walk with God, I'm gonna share some biblical principles that you can apply to your marriage. So, let's get started. So, uh, before we get into it, uh, please subscribe on YouTube or follow us on Facebook if you want to get notified. Uh, about the latest videos. I usually post now uh, twice a week, so catch me on Facebook, catch me on YouTube. And as a legal disclaimer, uh, before we get started, uh, I want to share with you that none of this information is legal advice. So if you need an attorney, I recommend you reach out to one. Uh, if you want, you can reach out to me and schedule a consultation. But nothing you, you learn here is legal advice and it doesn't create an attorney-client relationship. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Edmund Yan. I am an estate planning attorney in California. I've been practicing for 10 years and I wanted to make this video to share some of the things that I've experienced um, as a husband, but also as an estate planning attorney working with hundreds of clients, I've seen a lot of dynamics when it comes to marriages, when it comes to making decisions together. So I hope that this can bless you in your marriage. So the question is, what if uh, your husband doesn't want to do his estate plan? What if he doesn't want to listen to you, right? What do you do? What can you do? So. First, you can set up your own estate plan. Um, you know, as a wife, you do not need the consent of your husband. So you can actually set up an estate plan yourself if you wanted to. So for example, you can set up your own health care directive. If you're disabled, who's going to take care of you? Who's going to make your medical decisions for you, right? Do you want to be a vegetable or do you want your family to pull the plug? if the doctors have tried everything. You can make those decisions yourself. You don't need your husband to agree with you to make those decisions. And then also you can set up your own power of attorney. If you're disabled, who's gonna make your financial decisions? Who's gonna um, pay your bills? Who's gonna sign contracts on your behalf? Who's gonna help you with your government benefits that you might need if you're disabled? So those are all things that you can plan in advance because if you don't do that, you don't have a health care directive, you don't have a power of attorney, your kids, even your spouse might go need to go to conservative, uh, might need to go to probate court to get a conservatorship to have the power to make your medical decisions, to have the power to make your uh, financial decisions. So you can do all these things yourself and it doesn't have to be with your husband. Same thing with the will. So you can set up your own will, right? If, if I pass away, who gets my assets? Uh, same thing with the trust, right? If you want to set up a trust to protect your real estate from probate, uh, you can do that. Uh, because in California, you control your half of your community property. So in California, you own everything 50-50 with, uh, with your husband. There are exceptions. So for example, if you have a prenup, right, then, then you own, th own things separately, which can make it even easier for you if your husband doesn't want to do an estate plan with you. Uh, but usually in California, whatever you earn, whatever you purchase or acquire after marriage or during marriage, then it's, it's a shared asset. So you get to give away, you get to plan your 50%. So even if you do not have the consent of your husband, you can actually plan out where your half goes. And one of the biggest reasons why moms, why wives want to do that is because they wanna protect their half for their kids. Because usually, if you don't have a plan, right? If you don't have a will, if you don't have a trust, something happens to you, your 50% of those community property assets, it's gonna to go to your husband. So you wanna make sure that if you don't want it to stay with your husband, maybe you're afraid that he's gonna remarry, 
right? And you want to make sure that your half goes to your kids after you're gone uh, automatically and immediately. So then your husband can't give everything to uh, their next spouse or to uh, other children or other, other people. You want to protect that. Then you have the right to do so, okay? You do not need the consent, the authority of your husband to give away your share of the community property and your share of the separate property. So uh, those are some tips for you if you wanted to do it yourself. And in fact, uh, I, I put together a free estate plan course that walks you through how to set up your will, how to set up your healthcare directive and your power of attorney. There's templates there from the state of California that you can use. So if you are interested to set up your estate plan yourself, you can actually get it done yourself. Um, so check that out because I, I share a lot of common mistakes that people do when they do set up their estate plan themselves. So if you want, uh, you can go through that course. It's a free course. It's a step-by-step -step video tutorial that's gonna help you put together the basic protections for your kids and for yourself. So before you do that though, before you do your own estate plan, um, I just wanna encourage you, okay, to do it together with your husband. So I know that you know sometimes it's difficult right? For, for you and your husband to agree. Sometimes it's difficult for you to convince him to do an estate plan. Um, but I do want to encourage you to work together because from all of the families that I've worked with, um, it's always best to do one estate plan together as a married couple um, for many reasons. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you some of the things, some of the um, suggestions that I have. Um, in terms of how do you talk to your husband, right? How do you convince him to do an estate plan together? And more importantly, how do you improve your relationship with your husband? So those are some things that we'll discuss today. So uh, before we get to that, uh, it, it's really important to understand the reasons why men don't want to do their estate plan. So then you can actually talk about these things with your husband. Um, because sometimes, you know, husbands want you to talk to them, even though sometimes we, we try to do everything ourselves or make all the decisions. We do want uh, the help of our wives. Like same with me, I, I want Amy's help, right? So talk to him, really understand what his fears are, what's his reservations for stopping him from getting an estate plan done. So the first thing is to ask him questions, right? Ask him questions. Hey, what's going on? Like, what, how can I help you, right? Um, what can we do together to protect the family? Because you as, as husband and wife, as mom and dad, you're the, the head of the household, right? You um, are there to help the kids and help the family as, as one unit. So you want to make sure that you understand some of his fears and um, to comfort him and, and, and to help your husband. So here are five reasons why men don't want to do an estate plan. Number one, they don't know where to start. Uh, some men are too prideful to ask for help, right? We tend to do that. We tend to think, oh, we know all the answers, but we don't. So uh, see if that's one of the reasons. Or uh, your husband might not understand it, might not understand what an estate plan does, what an estate plan can can do for the family, right? So I encourage you to, to educate him, watch videos together. I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube, on my website. So watch those with, them, with him. Go through the free estate plan course that I have. Go through the other things that I have for free that you can do it together as a husband and wife to make it fun. And another reason is uh, they don't want to talk about it, right? They don't want to talk about death. They don't want to talk about their assets, right? That, that might be another reason. Or they might be stuck on certain decisions, right? They might not know, okay, if I pass away, if I'm disabled, what do I want um, to happen with these assets? And so you can actually help him with that um, once you understand these fears and these reasons. And also uh, the fifth reason is he might think it's too expensive, um, but uh, so for example, he doesn't want to invest in an estate plan, right? Uh, but again, you know, there, there's always these options of getting things done, right? We can, you can get it done yourself, right? You can do it online. You can find an attorney that's, that's within your budget. So, um, you know, ha being too expensive is, is not a good reason sometimes when you understand 
what the actual cost of not doing estate plan is, which is if you don't have an estate plan, uh, your kids will go to probate to receive their inheritance. And depending on how much your assets are worth, probate uh, for homeowners on average, it could be between $30,000 to $50,000. And um, you might not be helping your kids putting together a tax plan to help them save on taxes. So, so they might be paying tens of thousands of dollars in taxes as well. So you wanna make sure that you help uh, your husband with these decisions by walking him through some of these reasons and having that open uh, dialogue with him. But uh, mo more importantly, one thing that, I, uh, that I've been uh, discovering is there's a deeper reason, you know, why, um, why husband and wives cannot agree on their estate plan, whether or not to do it together or whether or not to do it at all, right? And the deeper reasons are relational problems. And so um, let me share with you 10 signs you're having marriage problems. And these marriage problems, you know, I, I speak this with love and compassion. We all experience it as, as husband and wives, but these 10 signs are, are gonna answer, you know, why your husband isn't on board or why you're not on board with your husband, uh, with his decisions, right? And so number one, um, these 10 signs are number one, what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours. Right? If, if that's your mentality, then that indicates uh, an issue with the marriage or there's no communication, right? Your husband says, no, I don't want to talk about it. Um, that, that can be a sign of a marriage problem or um, control issues, right? Husbands sometimes feel like their wives are controlling him. So I, I had a consultation where um, the husband, you can tell, was really angry with his wife and he says, I hate it that she controls everything. I don't even want to do this, right? Uh, what she wants for the for our kids, I don't even want. And it's really painful to, to see those things happen in, in marriages, but it's because one party feels like the other person has always been controlling them. And so if you're experiencing this with your marriage, um, acknowledge it right no marriage is perfect no one's perfect and so when we acknowledge this then we're we'll move forward with finding a solution and number four uh, if you argue often right that's a sign of having marriage problems if you can't agree on certain things if you can't make decisions together as a married couple um, if there's no trust if there's no respect if there's no love Later on in this video, I'm going to show you what love is, what respect is in the eyes of Jesus, and that's going to help you with your relationship. And number 10, unfaithfulness. You know, that's, that's obvious. So those are the 10 signs um, of, of having an unhealthy relationship. And again, I'm not saying this to, to, to blame anyone, um, to cause any trouble, but I'm saying this with love. I'm saying this with compassion. So for the rest of this video, you know, my goal is um, I'm going to share scripture with you. I'm going to share the word of God. And I'm going to share with you what God says about a marriage, what God says about how a husband is to treat his wife, how his wife is to treat his husband. So then the both of you can start thinking about these things. The both of you can start reconciling your relationship. And it's really not for you. Yes, it's for you, but it's really not for you. It's for your family. It's for your kids. It's for your kids' kids. You need to break that generational curse of having bad relationships. You need to break that generational curse of um, you know uh, parents don't getting along and and because what you do, your kids know, and what you what you do, your kids will follow. So you want to make sure that you break this generational curse of having bad relationships in in your family, and you do that with the Holy Spirit, you do that with the Word of God. So today, I'm gonna to share that with you uh, for the rest of the video. So here are the three marriage secrets. Um, these secrets uh, I've learned uh, through my own uh, experience. So I've been married for seven years. Um, also my experience you know, helping hundreds of clients uh, with their estate plan. Um, we have these intimate conversations that a lot of married couples don't share with the world, right? We, we have this idea of um, sharing with the world that our marriage is perfect, 
Um, but obviously no marriage is perfect and that's fine, right? We live in a fallen world and it's all about connecting with one another, improving every day and growing into the children of God. Uh, so I, I want to share with you these three secrets, which is number one, um, in a marriage, we have to act as one flesh. So I'll describe what that means in a second. Number two, the husband needs respect and the wife needs respect. So in the Bible, it says uh, the husband wants respect and the wife wants love, right? So respect and love are two things that I'm going to break down with you, what it means um, with, with the way that Jesus explains it. And number three is treat one another as the sons and daughters of God. When we understand who we are, when we understand that we're children of God, we're going to see the world differently. We're going to treat each other differently. So I'm going to share with you what it means and what the word says about these three secrets. So um, before I get started uh, with, with, with the three secrets, I, I, I want to share with you a little bit about my relationship with my wife, Amy. So we got married uh, seven years ago and um, it was the best decision both of us has ever made um, being together because we feel like God wanted us to be together. God wanted us to grow together. God wanted us to share with the world the love of Jesus. But when we got married, we didn't understand any of that. Right? We were still little kids. Uh, we're still little kids, but we were even more kids in, in, in the past. And so when we approached marriage, it was, it was very selfish. Right? We didn't understand what's God's way of marriage. And uh, fortunately, we've been really blessed with one another, right? We, we get along, uh, we love each other, we respect each other. And so still, right, there's marriage issues, right? Sometimes we argue, sometimes we bicker, sometimes we can't agree, right, with, with one another. So how do we break out of those curses? How do we break out of those arguments? And how do we see ourselves in the, in the way that God sees marriage? Because from everything I've experienced in life and what I see in my, my clients in the world, the reason why marriages are broken is because we don't understand our roles as a husband and as, as a wife. Like God has created a husband and a wife and designated the role of a husband and a wife for us to help us. He, he really did that, just like in a company, right? There's the CEO, there's the managers, there's the team members, there's a defined role. And so if you're at a really good company and you've got that company culture, that company culture will, will let you know like what each person's role is in the company. And that's how uh, the company stays united. That's how companies function successfully. And same thing with the marriage. When the husband and the wife in the marriage understands what each person's role is, then it's going to reshape the marriage. It's going to reshape the way you talk to each other, treat each other, see each other. And you're going to see each other and treat each other the way that God always intended us to, to treat each other and see each other. So I'm going to share that with you. You know, personally, um, before I really uh, understood the Word of God, before I surrendered myself fully to Jesus, um, I didn't know love, right? I the way that I knew love was the Hollywood kind of love, right? The one, the type of love that we see in movies. But as you know, that love is so superficial. That love is not love. It's it's mostly lust. It's mostly selfish love, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna love you so then you can love me. If if you don't love me, I'm not gonna love you, right? That's why over half of marriages in California and most parts of the world end up in divorce. So. How do we stop that from happening? How do we truly become one with uh, our, our spouses as God intended us to be? And the, the easiest thing to do is to really understand God's word and understand how God made marriage. And so um, today, let's, let's talk about the three secrets. So secret number one is act as one flesh. So if you feel like your husband is not talking to you, or listening to you, um, and and husbands, if you feel like you know the, your your wife is not listening to you, your your wife is not on the same page with you, what do you do? Um, the first step is to understand. Like we have to we have to redefine ourselves as human beings. Is that when we get married, we are one flesh, because the Bible says, and the two shall become one flesh. 
So they are no longer two, but one flesh. So Jesus is saying, when we get married, we're no longer two separate people. We're one person united under one flesh, physically, right? Spiritually, financially. So everything that we do um, in life when it comes to raising our kids, right? Our career, our finances, our health, our estate plan, our relationships, it must be under one flesh. We have to agree. We have to um, work on uniting as one person. And I know that a lot of times it's hard, right? Just like me and my wife, we have different opinions a lot of the time. So how do we become one? How do we agree and not compromise, right? How do we agree um, so then our, our marriage improves and so the decisions that we make improves and our family uh, feels more of our love because a lot of times our kids, they can feel when we are bickering, when we're fighting, when we're not united and that affects their relationship with us but also their relationship with their spouse, right? Um, you know, I. I grew up in, in the Chinese culture, and Chinese culture, a lot of times, um, there's, there's not a lot of love um, within grandparents, great-grandparents, right? We see it in our uncles and aunts. And so we expect, okay, you know, marriage is, is, um, is all about bickering, it's all about arguing, you know, saying these things to, to one another. But no, that's not what marriage is about. It's because we've fallen away from uh, the original intention that God has given us. We've forgotten why God has put together uh, God put us together God put us together you know not to be selfish God put us together to be sacrificial and so later on I'm, I'm going to share with you what it means to truly love what it means to truly respect in the way that Jesus defines respect and love and it's going to completely change your relationship and also your, your view of the world so stick around for that and if, if the both of you really can't agree, I highly recommend that you seek marriage counsel. Um, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing, right? It doesn't mean that you're a failure if, if you get counseling, whether it's from your church, right? Whether it's from a therapist, uh, whatever it takes, you want to make sure that you seek help, right? Just like how you seek help with everything else in your life right? You want to seek help in your marriage as well. So I encourage you to talk to, talk to your husband first, talk to your wife first and see, you know, what areas you have to improve. And, and if you can't fix it yourself, seek counseling. And number one, seek God. Like when you pray, when you seek God, when you allow the Holy Spirit to work through you, that helps so much. So I encourage you to, to truly seek help. So I, I want to share with you this this Bible verse, um, which is basically, it reminds us that two is better than one. Uh, as married couples, sometimes we forget that we are one. And so we act as if we're two separate people, as if there's no marriage, right? Why are you doing this to me? Like, I want to do that, right? It's all about me, me, me. But the Bible says that two is better than one. And so uh, this is this is from... Ecclesiastes, it says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand uh, back to back and conquer so what the bible is saying here is that two is better than one like when we as husband and wife separate we we do things separately we we don't agree that is where the devil comes in the devil loves having a foothold in our relationships so all of these arguments all of this separation this these disagreements that you have know that it's from the devil so pray Pray for Jesus to cast out any demons in, in your household, to cast out any unclean spirits that are holding you back. Because the power of prayer, you're, you're dealing with spiritual warfare. And um, there's things that the devil is doing in your, in, in your life that you cannot see. So when you pray to God, when you, when you pray for Jesus to remove things, these things for you, you're going to start to see the changes uh, in, in, in the physical. So I encourage you to understand that there is a spiritual warfare that's going on between you and your husband. If you cannot agree 
on, on even what to do with your estate plan, right? Or, or what to eat at night. And so I encourage you to seek out God, to take away these demons that are trying to separate a husband and wife and ruin families. So um, this, um, this, this part of scripture I, I love because it says if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. Right, God put us together, uh, uh, husband and wife, so we can support one another, so then we can have each other's back. Right, it says, so the two can stand back to back and conquer. God wants you to conquer your fears, wants you to conquer the terrible things uh, in life, and wants you to succeed as a family. So when you stand back to back to one to one another, and you truly see this unity of marriage as teamwork rather than you know both of you going at it the both of you are not the enemy right it, it sometimes it feels that way in a marriage you feel like my wife's my enemy or my husband's my enemy because they don't want to do what i want to do right those type of thoughts that's the devil talking so you want to make sure that you remove those things and understand um, from the bible and god's words like what it means to, to truly be husband and wife and, and how to treat one another and how to leverage your relationship, right? So um, really dive into the scripture right here. It's Ecclesiastes chapter four, nine to 12. Meditate on it, uh, read it and consume it and apply it to your life. And, and this particular verse is not talking specifically about marriage, but it can be applied um, to the context of marriage. So secret number two is, uh, did you know that husbands need respect and the wives need love? So that's, that's how the, the Bible describes our love language. Uh, so you know how there's like that popular love language um, that, that people are doing, they're discovering, oh, what's your love language? Oh, you know, th this is how I share love. This is how I feel love. Um, but the Bible already gave us our love language when it comes to husband and wives. The Bible says the husband, uh, you know, needs love. I mean, I'm sorry, needs respect, and the wives need love. So, I'll break down down what that means by sharing scripture. So each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So, God knows what we need, what a husband need, what a wife needs, and so He's told us uh, what to do. In, in a marriage. So, so men, we need to love our wife. And uh, wives, you need to respect your husband. So what does love mean? What does respect mean, right? We, we use those terms a lot, but like truly, do we really understand what it means in this context? And I'm gonna share more scripture with you in a second about what this all means. So when we learn the definition of love through Christ, um, it's going to transform your relationship because uh, the Bible says for husbands, what does love mean? This means love your wives just as Jesus loved the church. So this is the definition of love. Okay, uh, Love is not the Hollywood type of love that we know it. Love is the type of love that Christ, that Jesus Christ had for us which is the ultimate type of love, the sacrificial love that we need to end all wars, to end all disagreements, to end all conflicts and misunderstandings. Because as, as, as you know, if, if you understand the, um, the love of Christ, the life of Christ, the way that Christ's love was very radical, right? His type of love is called agape, which is sacrificial love. Jesus sacrificed his own own life for us so that we so our sins can be forgiven so that we can have eternal life with our heavenly father that is the ultimate sacrifice and jesus is god right jesus came down or god came down as flesh um, as jesus to show us what love really is what agape really is and how to live with love true love so when we look to Jesus, when we look to Jesus to define what love is, we're gonna have a completely different relationship with our husbands and completely different relationship with our wives. And specifically, um, God says that uh, for husbands, this means love your wives. So 
God knows that wives, females, they want love. That's, there's, that's their number one love language, right? They need love from the husband. And so to experience that love, um, husbands, we need to sacrifice ourselves for, for our wife, right? And, you know, just, just like if, if someone's going to attack our wives, we're going to defend, defend her. And that mentality must also come in to the family, to our everyday life, right? Even to what we eat, where we go, right? What we do for fun. Like that sacrificial love is what our wives are craving for and that are so missing in households. So I, I don't have <laughs> time to go into what sacrificial love is, but I encourage you to read the Bible, read the Gospel of John, read the Gospel of Matthew, and see how God, I mean, how Jesus treats people. Even when, even when people are arguing with, with him, even if people despise him or spit at him or slap him, see how Jesus reacts to those things. And then you're going to understand how to treat your wife because we need to love our wives just as Jesus loved the church. So the church is us. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the family of God, right? Jesus loved us so much that he sacrificed everything for us, his, his life, right? He, he um, died the worst type of death uh, that, that you could imagine back in those days, which is the crucifixion. So understand the love of jesus when you love uh, when you love your wife just as how jesus loved us i i don't think we can always uh, i don't think we can ever love each other as jesus loved us but we can strive to do that right we can we can emulate jesus so i encourage you husbands to to really dive into the gospel and see how jesus loves and apply that to your relationship and i i i this is my testimony. When I started loving Amy the way that Jesus loves us, like it completely changed. It completely changed our relationship. Um, I, I, I put down some, some of the things that I, I would have cared about, right? That would have, I would have said to her in the past. Um, it has softened my heart. I finally understood what love is. Um, for a lot of you men out there, you probably don't know what love is. You probably don't even know how it feels like, right? We want that love. And the first place to start is to understand that love through Jesus. So I encourage you to, to seek that um, through, through Jesus Christ. So uh, I wanna share something that's very controversial in the Bible. And this is something where, um, especially these days uh, with, with um, uh, our, our culture of how, um, you know, we, uh, of, of like, you know, women's power, you know, Beyonce and how, how, you know, women should be, um, ruling the world, right? That type of mentality, which is, which is fine. Um, but it's created a culture where, um, women and men, uh, believe that the, Bi the Bible is outdated because here in this scripture, it says that women are to submit to men are to submit to their husbands. And so if you just read that woman to, uh, the wife is to submit to their husbands, you might think, oh, get out of here. You know, this is sexist, right? This is prejudice against females. Like, I don't wanna read the Bible. I don't want to consume the word of God. I don't wanna live the way that God wants me to live because this is false, right? But uh, before I go into the scripture, I wanted to ask you to have an open heart, have an open mind when you read this. And when you read the Bible as a whole and not just as a sentence, you're gonna understand what God is saying here. You're gonna understand why God's saying this. So um, earlier we, we talked about how, uh, you know, as wives, wives want love from their husbands, right? And, and husbands are to love his wife, to sacrifice for his wife. So on the flip side for, for wives, um, God made wives to submit to their husbands. And again, don't attack me. Don't say, what, Edmund, you are sexist. Like, why do I want to submit to my husband, right? So um, before I define what submission really means, uh, let's, let's read the scripture together. So this is from Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 20, 25 and probably 27. Um, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. 
For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to, to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands and everything. So, again, if you only read this, you might think this is so sexist. Like this doesn't apply to society anymore. But I want to break it down for you a little bit. So let's start with the first sentence: submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So what does that mean?、Um, let's let's define reverence first. Reverence means deep respect. So God's saying here is submit to one another out of deep respect for Christ. So、uh, God God expects both husband and wife. To submit to one another, right? And then for wives specifically, now he's talking about、um, to, to to wives. Hey, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord, right? So,、um, so what does it mean to to submit?、Uh, submit is basically respect, right? Submit is respect in this biblical sense of submission.、Uh, wives are to respect、uh, her husband, and so. It doesn't mean doing everything that the husband tells you to. It doesn't mean clean up after your husband. It doesn't mean you know all these negative connotations that we associate with the word submission. Submission means respect. So God's telling us that we husbands, we men, we want respect from our wives more than love, right? Our love language is respect. When we feel respect. From our from our wives, then we feel good. We feel like we have a good relationship. So, how do、um, wives respect and submit to their husbands?、Um, and one of the biggest things to understand is uh, in uh, the 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 next verse, which is、uh, for a husband is the head of of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. So what this is saying is, is that the husbands are the spiritual leaders of the household, and that's how God designed it to be, right? Just like how I mentioned previously, a great company has roles, right? The CEO,、um, the CTO, the managers, right, and, and and so forth. Everyone knows what their role is, and God created the husband as the head of the household, meaning the spiritual leader of the household. It doesn't mean the husband gets to make every decision. It doesn't mean that the husband gets to do whatever he wants. It means that the husband needs to step up and be the spiritual leader that God made him to be. So, I see this a lot、um, when I'm talking to clients, when I'm、uh, doing their estate plans, and and I'm talking to them and understanding their their relationship is. The husbands are are usually when when there is discontent, when there's disagreements in a marriage, the husbands are usually not the spiritual leaders of the household. And、um, what does that mean, right? What does it mean to be a spiritual leader?、Uh, well, the husband needs to lay down their lives f-、um, for his wife, which means that the husbands need to learn how to have that that sacrificial love. For his wife, that he would do anything for her, right? That's what Jesus did. Jesus did anything and everything for the church to save the body of God, to cha- save the children of God. Jesus did everything that he could, which is to give up his life. And also,、um, as a spiritual leader, you know, we as husbands, we need to be a servant leader. So it doesn't mean a leader like a king that just sits on his throne and say, "Hey, servant." You know, give me my lunch, give me my my dinner. It means as as a spiritual leader, us husbands, like we we have to be a servant leader to our wives. We need to serve and and to be that leader at the same time. And we need to,、uh, we need to listen to our wives. We need to listen to our wives' hearts. Like what what is it that's truly going on inside our our our、uh, wives? What truly does is it that she needs from me, right? We're we're never thinking about that. It's it's always what what can our wives give us? What can our husband gives us? It's it's never okay. What do my what does my wife need, and how can I give that to her, right? It, when when we understand our role as a spiritual leader, everything changes. 
And when we step into that role, we're going to improve our relationship and that's going to improve every other areas of our life. So we need to satisfy our wives' needs. Like, what are those needs? That's why having open communication is so important, right? And, and one of the needs of wives is they want to set up an estate plan to give themselves peace of mind, to give themselves that plan so then they know that if something happened to them, that the kids will be okay, right? That's, that's the motherly love. And so as husbands, we need to understand that motherly love that our, our wives have and, and to, um, to satisfy that, that need, right? To do the estate plan, to talk to our wives and understand, okay, what do you want to do with these assets? How do we want to leave it for our kids, right? Then we can start having those open dialogues. But if husbands, we don't step into our shoes as, our spirit, as the spiritual leaders of the household, then we're not going to have that relationship with our, our, our wife. And our wife needs that from us. So know your role, right? As husbands, we're the spiritual leaders. Um, we need to respect our wives. We need to give that sacrificial love to her. And wives, um, you know, you need to respect your, uh, your husbands um, through understanding um, how to respect Jesus. Once you understand how to respect Jesus, you just apply that to your husband. You know, see your husband as if you're as as if you're treating Jesus the way that you're you're treating your husband. So I'm sure that you're going to treat Jesus really well, right? And so same thing with your husbands. Treat him with respect, and that's the the type of need and desires that God has made us. Um, husbands want respect. God uh, wives want love. So the question I get a lot is, you know, what if your husband? Um, doesn't respect you? What if the husband doesn't want to do this, even though he knows that it's good for the family? What do you do, right? Um, the problem is, with everything we're talking about, it needs to be a two-way street. It cannot be a one-way street. So if you want to improve your relationship, first of all, pray, because prayer is the most powerful. But second of all, you have to figure out how to get your husband on board, how to get him to, to um, step up to be the spiritual leader, how to get help, right? How to improve himself. A lot of times we as human beings, we stop improving <clears throat> after college. We stop improving after the first year of marriage, right? We just get into this routine, these, this stubbornness, this, this um, unproductive habit when it comes to our relationships. And so we need to constantly reevaluate ourselves to grow into the children that God has made us to be. So if, if you are struggling with your marriage, I highly recommend that you seek that help. Marriage counseling through your church, marriage counseling through a therapist, whatever is, is right for you or your um, husband. And, and, and it starts with communicating, being in the word, praying, so then you can have that guidance from God. Sometimes we try to fix our relationships, we try to fix our earthly problems by ourselves, by um, you know, asking ourselves, what do I do? Right. The first question you should ask yourself is, what can the Holy Spirit do through me? Surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. Let God's Spirit come into your life, come into your body, your soul, and let the Spirit lead you because the Spirit can do anything. Nothing is impossible for Jesus. Nothing is impossible for God. And Jesus left us this gift of the Holy Spirit to help us. Right? Jesus said when he ascended to heaven, I am not leaving you as orphans. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit so that we can rely on the Holy Spirit. If, if you're struggling with anything in life, addiction, relationships, right? Anything, the Holy Spirit can help you. So surrender to that. And um, at the end of this video, I'm going to do a prayer with you um, to, to invite the Holy Spirit to, to fill you up and, and come into your life. So uh, secret number three is treat one another as the sons and daughters of God. So the reason why there's marriage problems, the reason why maybe you can't uh, talk to your husband or your wife about estate planning is because you don't treat each other as the sons and daughters of God. So what do I mean by that? Um, the Bible says, but to all who believe him and accepted him, Jesus, he, Jesus, gave the right to become children of God. So because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we now can 
be adopted into the family of God, to be the sons and daughters of God. And we're no longer just a creation of God. And God is no longer just our creator. He's our father, right? He's our heavenly father. And we are the sons and daughters of the king of all kings, of the creator of this universe. So when we recognize this in our relationships, things change, right? Because the moment that we accept Jesus, we become the sons and daughters of God. And so uh, as sons and daughters of God, when we understand that our wife is a daughter of God, when we understand our husband is the son of God, we're going to treat them completely different, right? All this, all this anger, right? This disappointment, this lack of faith and trust and respect and love, that's going to go away because we understand that we are the children of God. And so in a sense, we're royalty, right? Not in the sense where everything should be catered to us, not in a selfish sense, but in a sense where we have this authority on earth as children of God. And so uh, when we see each other as that, we have more love, we have more respect for one another. And the Bible also says, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So what does it mean to suffer? Sometimes it's to put our own selfish desires away, right? Um, did you know that the word passion means to suffer? So society has redefined what passion is, right? Follow your passion, do what you're passionate about. But passion is really to suffer and to endure the type of pain and suffering that Jesus endured for us so that we can have everlasting life. So when we endure, when we suffer, when we truly surrender ourselves to first Jesus and then to our spouses, like that's the best type of love. Like that's the best way to live, right? We're no longer living for ourselves. The reason why potentially you and your husband are having problems is because you're living for one another or you're living for yourselves. You're not living for one another. So when you learn how to live for one another, you're going to learn how to treat one another and plan your life together for the rest of your life. So rest in this truth that we are the children of God. God hears us. God hears every prayer that you pray to him, even before you ask him. But he wants you to ask to have a relationship with him. But God hears you. God knows your pain. God knows what you want. So reach out to him. Have that relationship with him. He sees everything. He sees the fears, the tears, the arguments. And so there's nothing to, to hide from him. So give it all to him, right? If, if you need help, cry to him. Reach out to him in your marriage because he, he will answer. He will answer. So understand that God is with us and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. So let the Holy Spirit lead your life. If, if you want more uh, information about the Holy Spirit, talk to your pastor, you know, watch these um, videos on YouTube about what the Holy Spirit is and, and how you can let the Holy Spirit uh, come into your life and to lead it so you're no longer leading it yourself. When I surrender to God, when I understood that no matter how successful I am, no matter how good I am in this world, I am nothing compared to God. I know nothing. If you watch Game of Thrones, right? Jon Snow, you know nothing, right? That, that phrase, that, that line, you know nothing. We know nothing. We know nothing when we, when we see ourselves um, as, as the children of God because God knows everything. So if we want to improve, if we need help, we need to seek Him. We need to let the Holy Spirit move through us. Once I did that, things changed in my life. And I would love to share more of their stories in um, the, the next videos. So another scripture I want to share with you, since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. So Jesus is saying here that, uh, it's, he, he's talking about marriage, right? Since since we're, as husband and wives, we're one flesh. We're no longer two, but one flesh. Let no one split us apart because God has joined us together. So God wants your marriage to be filled with love, to be filled with joy, and to filled with respect, 
right? He wants us to succeed as a marriage. God doesn't want us to argue all the time, disagree all the time, um, especially with estate planning. Estate planning is, is one of the most intimate, important things that you can do with your family, with your spouse, because it has to do with death, which, which is the biggest event for most of us that we ignore. And so when we do this out of love, when we do this with joy and respect for one another, um, that's the best gift you can give one another. That's the best gift you can give your, your children. So before you can do that, you need to repair your relationship if the both of you cannot agree on what to do with your estate plan. And of course, God doesn't want us to divorce. You know, 50% of marriages in California end up in divorce. Uh, even uh, people in their 70s and 80s. I have clients in their 70s and 80s, and they're getting divorced. It's the saddest thing to see. And it's because we've lost our, our hope in each other because we don't have the hope in God. We don't have that guidance in God. We don't have that love and respect that God wants us to have for each other. So if you're missing that, it's because you're missing God in your life. Um, even if you've been a Catholic or a Christian all your life, uh, I highly recommend that you seek the Lord because when your relationship with God comes closer together, when you're closer to God, God's going to reveal himself to you. God's going to show you what you need to do with your marriage to save it and to thrive. So I encourage you to continually seek the Lord. So, you know, I, I, I want to pray for you. Um, I, I want to pray that, first of all, you accept being part of the uh, family of God, and that even if you come from a broken family, right, even if your relationship with your spouse is not good right now, God wants to adopt you into his family as his son, as his daughter. And that is through the love of Jesus Christ, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And when you do that, when, when you're finally ready to say, I'm done doing me, like this is what I did. I, I told myself, I grew up Catholic and Christian, both sides of the family, but I was, n I was not born again until I was an adult. I, I didn't understand the true love of God. I didn't understand what it meant to walk with Jesus until recently. And so uh, I encourage you that even if you've gro grown up in the church for many years, for decades, you might not have that relationship with God. You might not be born again. So continuing to seek God is so important, right? Seek his kingdom first and all will be added to you. So seek him and all of this relationship problems, this money problems, this health problems you have, all of that will be resolved when you have God in your heart because you'll understand that all of that is just nothing. All of that is just little things because when you understand God, um, you're going to understand the keys to the universe and you're going to understand what it means to truly love your spouse. So I pray that, uh, first of all, you accept Jesus into your heart and that you seek him first to help him with, uh, to help you with your life and that you surrender to him completely. So it's not about me anymore. It's about you, Lord, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to treat my wife? How do you want me to treat my husband? And that's going to help everybody involved. So the takeaways from this video is husband, respect your wives, right? Sacrifice for her. Show her that she means the world to you. Show her that you love her. And, and wives, uh, you know, love, uh, love your husbands. I think I got it reversed. <laughs> husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect your husbands. So respect your husband by having that deep respect for him just like how jesus would um how jesus would right so so ask yourself what would jesus do in this situation what would jesus do keep asking yourself that every single day what would jesus do and jesus is gonna uh, give you the answer and the last takeaway like i said learn respect and love from jesus it's the only way that you can learn true love and true respect is through Jesus Christ. If you want a better relationship, if you want um, his help to create an estate plan for your family, you need to learn what love and respect is from Jesus and surrender to him. Uh, surrender to him and, and let him lead your life. 
So now that you know these things, just do it, right? Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. So it starts with having that communication with your husband, no matter how uncomfortable it's gonna feel, you gotta, you gotta talk to him, right? Open that line of communication, but talk to him with love and respect. And husbands, love and respect your wife back. Okay, so um, do the things that you've learned from God and do the things that God's telling you to do right now. Pray to God after this video. Ask God, God, I surrender to you. I give my life to you, Jesus. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to fix my relationship? How do you want us to plan our estate plan with our family so that we can protect our families and go in peace? Go back to heaven in peace, right? Go home in peace so that we don't give our children a mess. We don't give them a curse. We give our children a blessing. So I encourage you to just do it, right? Whatever that first step is with your husband or your wife, just do it. So I have some helpful resources to help you. First of all, the free estate plan, right? Uh, you can set up your own will, healthcare directive, power of attorney. Do this with your husband, go through it with your husband. If you wanna go through it yourself first, so then you, you understand what to do and what to say to him, go through it yourself. So for each document, I have a specific video for it. Okay, so go through it together or yourself and really understand what it means to set up an estate plan to help your family. And also, I have a free handbook called The Prosperity Triangle. So um, this handbook is an inter interactive handbook where it's gonna start asking you questions about estate planning. How do you wanna leave assets to your kids? Right? How do you wanna be taken care of if you're disabled? Those are things you wanna work together on. So uh, print this out or you can do it on your iPad or on your computer. Uh, it's a fillable PDF. Fill it out and do it with your husband. That's the best way to really understand what each person's thinking about. Get it out there, right? No more lack of communication, no more separation, no more uh, gap between you and your husband. Bring it all together. And so this is a really helpful resource to help you with that. And you'll be surprised how in sync you and your husband are actually. When you go through this, you're like, oh, I never, I, I never knew that this is how you feel as well. So this is gonna help you repair that relationship. And of course, um, when the both of you are ready, I would love to uh, meet with you and to plan your estate with you, uh, plan your living trust with you. A lot of couples, um, when, when they reach out to me, they're in complete disagreement as to how they wanna leave their assets to their kids, right? And so I'm, I'm kind of that bridge um, that, that third party to come in to, to, to help you as a neutral third party to, to reconcile those differences. So if you need that help, schedule a call with me. And don't forget to like this video if you liked it so then uh, you know people can be blessed with it and also share it with your friends and family if, if this is helpful. And if you want to stay connected, if you want to know when the, new, uh, the next video is coming out, subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe um, to the Facebook page because these videos are live. So these are live videos that I'm um, broadcasting on Facebook. So you can come on and ask me questions. So before we end, I, I wanted to pray together um, because everything we talked about starts with Jesus. Once you have Jesus in your heart, once you have Jesus in your life and you listen to Jesus, you trust in him, you obey the things that he knows is good for your family, then things start to change. So let's pray for that. Let's, let's pray for Jesus to, to touch your lives, the Holy Spirit to fill you up. And, and for those of you who haven't accepted Jesus, if you're ready um, to join the family of God, um, uh, say this prayer with me, pray together, because I truly believe in the power of prayer. When we pray together, right? When two or more people pray together, Jesus is here. Jesus is with us. And so we wanna make sure that we pray together and there's never a waste of time in prayer. There's a spiritual warfare going on uh, right now and the more you pray, the more you're gonna help your family, the more you're gonna help God and be, be aligned with God. So um, can we pray together? Uh, so if, if you want, you can pray with us. Uh, uh, let's, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together, thank you so much for being in your word, to, to learn more about your wisdom, about your love, about your grace and mercy through Jesus. And Father, I pray 
that those who have not accepted you yet um, and those who want to, I pray that you come into their lives right now. I pray that you um, bless them and that you show them what it feels like to be a family of God, to be a child of God, to be a daughter of God. Father, I, I pray that um, those who are accepting you, that they repent of their sins, that they turn from our wicked ways and, and we come to you, Lord, and we surrender to you and say, hey, I've done this all my life. I've tried to do things my way and now enough is enough. My way does not work. I want your way, Jesus. I want your way. I accept you into my life. I accept you into my heart. I know that you died for us on the cross and that you allowed us to be children of God by forgiving our sins and from dying on the cross and rising on the third day so that we can have everlasting life with our Heavenly Father. I pray, Lord, that you gift us with your wisdom, you gift us with your power so that we can continue to grow into our relationship with you first and then grow our relationship with our husbands, with our wives, because we know that you want our families to unite. You want our families filled with love, not hatred, not anger, not fear, but love and respect for one another. So Father, I pray that you bless all of our families with that love and respect and show us the way. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Show us how we can improve our relationships. Show us how we can truly live as one family under your family. So Father, thank you so much for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you have any questions about what we learned and, and what uh, we shared today, please share it in the comments below and I will talk to you next time. God bless you.